Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 31 for a spaceship game that I'm building with my buddy Rich in Unreal Engine 5. We have a whole bunch of help from the community right now, and if you guys want to follow along the project with more detail, check out our Discord linked in the video description. Today, I've got a ton of cool stuff that I want to show off. We have docking improvements, a whole bunch of new concept art, modeling progress on new spaceships, which is always exciting. We're laying the foundation for the in-game music system, which will have some fun dynamic elements. Let's start off by looking at some of the cool new concept art and some of the ships that are coming out of this. Now you may have seen this concept art before. This is by Island, a concept artist who's working for the game, and this would be one of our entry level cargo and hauling ships. And we have a new modeler on the team who goes by the name of Johnny Popcorn, who has turned this concept into a beautiful 3D spaceship that uh, actually got into the game with a little white box test just to make sure everything fit where it was supposed to and then it'll go through the final cleanup pass and eventually texturing. Island has also been expanding his cargo design into larger looking ships. This here is a size 3 cargo ship. It has some retro rockets on the front which are going to help it slow down if it's coming into dock with say a full load of cargo. Now, speaking of docking, we've actually been working a bit on a new docking system. When you approach a station, it will now show you where the available dock points are with a little green arrow. Maybe we can apply that to the whole station down the road. So it'll show you where they line up. And as you get close, we have a little bit of a new docking UI now. We got to line those up. And we get our cargo bay. And once we're done, undock, we can move away from the station. We get our little docking interface once again. Shows us where we can dock. I'll come around to this point here. We need to line these up. Requires a little bit of finessing on the thrusters. And once we're lined up, the ship gives us a nice little lock there. Now we're not quite done with it, but uh, there's a lot of logic that goes into this system and I'm going to have Rich kind of explain all the, the back end stuff that went into it. The latest round of updates to docking and the airlock required some interesting collision work. All right, let's go into the game and I'll show you how this collision works and some of the tools we use. I'll start by opening up the console and putting in a command to show all collision. So now we see kind of this mess of lines. It's hard to distinguish some of them. So let's make it a little easier to look at. All right, I made a few changes that should make all the collision a little bit easier to see. And we're focusing on the airlock now. I took the cargo bay and made those lines black so they're out of the way. And I got rid of the planet for now, which shouldn't need collision anyway, but that's another story. The outer sphere here, this magenta sphere, is for detecting nearby airlocks that are compatible with my airlock. And then this inner blue sphere is for when I get close to the airlock and it starts the alignment process. When those magenta spheres overlap, I start seeing arrows indicating, hey, there's an airlock nearby. We also have the other airlock on this ship will light up too, but we're going to probably add an airlock brain to determine what's the most convenient airlock and only light that one up. Now we also have this blue ring. When we overlap those, it tells those two airlocks we're going to try and align now. So start the alignment process. And you might also notice there's a new red collider around the airlock collar. And that is a blocking collision rather than just an overlap. So that appears when we're in the alignment phase to prevent me from going through other geometry. And right now we have these two little red alignment dots. Those are collisions where both of those have to be, well, all four of those have to be touching in order to be considered aligned. That's our mechanic right now, but we're going to, we got an idea for another one where we're going to use actual angle and distance and be able to know how aligned you are on a scale of you know zero to one rather than just zero or one a boolean are these two are these four aligned 
A couple other things to note are as soon as you cross the inner circles when you start the alignment process, the ship's ability to accelerate is cut greatly so that you have more control, more fine control over the movement of the ship. With this slower movement, you can almost barely see the RCS thruster particles now. So we're going to adjust that to sort of fake it probably. Um, and maybe set some curves or adjust something to where you can still see the R RCS thrusters while we're using this very light control. And then finally, when we do get docked, as soon as the alignment is successful, we disable the controls. We do a little bit more fine final alignment of the ship. And then we open up whatever menu is supposed to open for this particular airlock that you docked with. All right. So while Rich has been working on docking related logic, I've been looking at our music player related logic. This here is the beginnings of what is hopefully a good dynamic music player for our game. Right now it's playing the menu music that was designed by Peter, as I like to call him, Peter from Australia, who's doing all the music for the game so far. And this player here is designed on a simple form to fade out one audio score and start another audio score. So if we go from the main menu into a game, it'll fade out that main menu music. And when the game loads, it'll play that regional music of wherever we are in the game. Now nested inside this main player, we have another meta sound, which is basically all the scores in the single meta sound player. So we can put all the music in here at the top. It's got the attack, decay, sustain, release logic of when to fade stuff out, when to fade it back in. And then we have our scores down below and each score can have its own unique logic. Like Limbus is gonna have several different two minute segments that it randomly transitions between. And then we can just plug it all into a mixer. Now, Peter also put together some combat music for us. And as we build upon it, it's gonna become even more dynamic. So if you start combat, we get a nice little drum beat at the start and then it enters the combat sequence. And so this can dynamically transition out of any music track that we're playing. And we can even have different combat sequences depending on what type of enemy you're playing uh, down the road. And then if the combat finishes, play that gives us a nice little drum effect and we'll trigger the normal in-game regional audio to play after that to sort of resume your exploration. But that's kind of a, a beginning look at our music player that will hopefully carry us through to the end game. Also, huge shout out to Augustin, who is a YouTuber and music composer who put together an amazing Unreal Engine meta sound tutorial that more or less gave me the building blocks on how to build this system. So as you can see, we've been quite busy over the past couple of weeks. There are so many projects in the work every week. There's something cool happening. It's been a real delight to work on this project so far. Again, if you guys want to follow along more closely, check out our discord and subscribe, you know, hit the like button, all that stuff. If you want to catch the next devlogs and if you want to catch up on old devlogs, check the playlist here. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.